Welcome to Company Showcase, an advertising feature on HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. I'm speaking with Larry Ray, CEO and President of American Manganese. Welcome back to Company Showcase, Larry. Thank you. Larry, again, another very busy week at American Manganese. Uh, what are you uh, working on right now? Oh, well, we're uh, a lot of conference calls are being made. And uh, more contacts are coming in. Uh, unfortunately, they're under NDA, which is fine. Um, you know, the reality of the whole situation is when we get the uh, demonstration plant up and running, we can uh, we can come with some solid numbers on uh, what it's going to cost us to produce the cathode material at the end of the uh, of the recycling process. And uh, you know, and what our Operation costs are going to be what our uh, our uh, build out costs are going to be. We can have all those things uh, with this. Uh, I'm really looking forward to getting this uh, started, and uh, it's a little late in the year now to think about starting up uh, before Christmas. But uh, I'm hoping that we'll have all the pieces in and be able to start soon after. And uh, it, it's going to be a, a, another uh, milestone for the company. Um, now we can uh, start putting numbers around things that uh, I don't know how other people are doing, but you're seeing all kinds of distractions in the market. And uh, some of those distractions are, uh, you know, still talking about the unprofitability of lithium-ion batteries and uh, recycling lithium-ion batteries, I should say. And... Uh, you know, as far as I can see, even from the back of the envelope for what we're doing right now, that uh, couldn't be further from the truth. It, uh, let's see, uh, the title in the Sun-Times uh, is, Will Electric Vehicle Battery Recycling Actually Be Economical? Well, that is a good question. And, uh, you know, certainly when you look at all the processes, if uh, some uh, journalist uh, does a deep dive, uh, he's beginning to wonder if it could be, uh, if there could be a profit at the end of the day. We think that there is. I mean, ever since we started down this path, uh, we've been keeping track on the, uh, what I always call on the back of the envelope, uh, um, I guess you'd call it uh, back of the envelope uh, projections. And uh, the projections are that, uh, yes, uh, we think we can make a profit. Uh, we've only uh, optimized on that through everything that we've done. And uh, it would be nice to have those uh, numbers, uh, you know, provided by the demonstration plant. And I think that will change the whole shift uh, on what people are thinking about on, uh, on recycling. So, uh, and what a lot of companies are not really facing up to, is the fact that there's still pollution being introduced into the environment. And we want to keep that out of the environment. So, you know, hence our, uh, our work with scraps. And we should uh, have, uh, you know, reuse of water. We should have the uh, product at the end of the day getting close to 100% recoveries and uh, very little, if not any, waste material. So... Uh, that, you know, is something we've strived for from the very beginning. And now it's starting to uh, show itself as being an important aspect of recycling. And uh, so I, I feel good about everything, Jim. It's uh, it's going on that way. There's other articles out there like, uh, you know, Tesla saying they're going to go to uh, to iron phosphate, bat lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, they have no value. And they're heavy. And uh, so you won't get the mileage out of them, and uh, there's uh, they're just not recyclable unless you want to go into a cost plus situation where somebody can recycle that material and uh, you know bury it somewhere uh, the waste material and uh, you know get the graphite and uh, and the uh, metals out. Now uh, you know there's no value in resale of those metals. So uh, the only thing that has value is lithium, and that's a very small portion of a lithium iron phosphate battery. So that's not going to carry any weight. So um, I've included an article in here by a Korean group that uh, pretty much, uh, you know, says it the way it is, and that is that uh, 
you're not going to make any money. Uh, you're, you're not going to be able to recycle those batteries with a profit. So, uh, and uh, if anything, it's going to cost you more at the end of the day than putting in a nickel manganese cobalt battery, for example, because that is recyclable and you can get, uh, we can get 100% of the uh, valuable metals back and put into a new battery. So, uh, yeah, these are, these are things that uh, work in our favor. Maybe they uh, look like they're uh, coming from offside and uh, they're not uh, favorable, but uh, people want to look at our transparency. They'll see that that's exactly what we've been working for for the last few years. And uh, so, you know, getting this demonstration pad up and going is uh, critical for us to start out the... Uh, or into the new year and, uh, you know, have, have some numbers to build a, uh, commercial plant around. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a very interesting thing. There's other articles out there where trains are going to start using, uh, lithium ion batteries for, uh, power. And, uh, that, that, you know, it goes a long ways. There's airplanes that are being developed to do that. There's ships that are being developed to do that. One uh, of the major ones here is right in the uh, Vancouver area. And uh, cars, trucks, uh, off-road vehicles, uh, underground vehicles, uh, mining. Uh, it, you know, some of, some uh, companies have already gone 100% lithium-ion. So uh, the uh, usage for lithium-ion batteries is going to go through the roof. And certainly the electric vehicle is going to be the, the leader in all that. So uh, I see nothing but good times coming for the company. And uh, I have articles attached to this podcast that speak to some of these uh, these uh, things that I just talked about. And uh, I think we're, uh, we're, we're, we've got a clear path forward. You know, we've got money in the bank, uh, enough money in the bank to uh, see a clear path to commercial production. And uh, so, you know, we've de-risked everything. Now the last de-risking is the uh, demonstration plant. And uh, so that's uh, that's going to be a big feather in our cap because that will just be the, uh, the uh, climax of all the work that we've done to date. And uh, so, Jim, it's uh, it's been a, uh, a hectic week. Uh, you know, my birthday fell in the middle of this week. And uh, so, uh, you know, it's been... Uh, I got a lot of good wishes, and uh, so it's uh, it's something that we're just going to carry forward with with our work. And uh, and I put my birthday behind me. I never think much about my birthday, but uh, a lot of other people do, uh, especially family. And uh, so anyway, uh, you know, I had a nice dinner. So what can I say? For our, our new listeners, what's American Manganese all about, Larry? American Manganese is a critical metals company that developed a process for treatment of uh, low grades of uh, manganese in the U.S. And uh, the U.S. has uh, manganese deposits, but they're all low grades. And uh, we developed a process that's patented, and uh, we can uh, we can turn around the uh, uh, two to three percent material, which is garbage in most of the uh, uh, manganese mines in the world. And turn, and turn that into valuable commodities. And uh, that is the cornerstone of our uh, recycling. It uh, just so happened that that fit perfectly. And uh, so, you know, we had a jump on that. And certainly our major push uh, the first couple of years was to get those patents approved and uh, get them written and get them in and uh, do the work that was necessary to prove that we could do what we said we were going to do. And those patents will be ultimately important. And, uh, you know, they are important now, but uh, people don't see the value in that. They think, oh, well, proprietary is just as good as, uh, as uh, patented, but you can certainly protect your patented process where propriety is going to be a, a sticky wicket to try to uh, protect. So, uh, you know, you don't know how many companies are using proprietary uh mythology that uh, overlaps and uh, would never make it through a uh, uh, a patent application but uh, yep, we uh, we got our patents we did our uh, proof of concept work and uh, we've done nothing but work ever since to uh, achieve uh, 
environmentally friendly closed loop solution for uh, recycling batteries and we've gotten there. Now you can, uh, we've reported on every step of our way in our press releases that uh, are in our, on our uh, website, uh, AmericanManganeseInc.com and uh, you can go there and find out every step that the company has taken. And, uh, you know, I may do an accumulation of the major steps uh, since we started this process uh, the next, uh, maybe before Christmas, uh, you know, on uh, so that people can uh, look at it and, uh, you know, and read through it in uh, three or four minutes and uh, see exactly what the company's done. So uh, we're traded on the uh, Toronto Venture Exchange under the symbol AMY. We're traded on the uh, U.S. QB board under the symbol AMYZF. And we're traded in Frankfurt under the symbol 2AM. And the uh, you can uh, phone the company here at 778-574-4444. Or you can send me an email at l-r-e-a-u-g-h at a-m-y-m-n dot com. Larry, thank you so much for the update and happy birthday. Thanks, Jim. My guest has been Larry Ray, CEO and President of American Manganese. I'm Jim Goddard. Our conversation took place on November 19th. Comments made on Company Showcase are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any manner whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Archived online at HowStreet.com. Company Showcase is a production of How Street Media Incorporated. 